In this lesson, we will learn about other trig graphs besides just sine and cosine. So for example, the graph of secant. Now remember that secant is going to be the reciprocal of cosine. So interesting enough, what happens is if you were to graph the cosine function the parent cosine function is this dotted black line same thing if you were to go the opposite direction what secant does it creates what looks like parabolas from the highest and lowest points and the reason they will never touch each other is because an asymptote actually gets created in between these parab what looks like parabolas. And the reason is if cosine is zero at pi over two, that means secant is gonna be one over zero at pi over two which we know is undefined. So any time cosine is zero, then secant is going to have an asymptote. Cosecant, we talked about, is the reciprocal of sine. So if you were to graph the parent function of sine, then every time it reaches its highest and lowest points, the cosecant function will create parabolas from there. And again, you will have the exact same instance happen. Wherever sine hits zero, that means cosecant is gonna be one over zero, which again is gonna be undefined. And so in that case, that is why you would have asymptotes everywhere the sine function is gonna be zero. Other trig functions are gonna be tangent and therefore cotangent. And interesting enough, the same thing will happen. Asymptotes will get created as well. And that will happen where cosine is zero. Because if you remember, tangent is sine over cosine. So any time cosine is zero, it is gonna make the tangent function undefined. So wherever cosine would have been zero at pi over two, at three pi over two, at five pi over two, you will have asymptotes there. Cotangent would be the opposite because to cotangent is cosine over sine. So wherever sine is zero, it is gonna make it undefined. So cotangent is gonna have asymptotes at pi and at zero and at two pi. That is where you would have asymptotes for the cotangent function. Okay. Inverse trig functions is going to be where you're thinking of sine of y is going to equal x. And you want to know what y value, if you plug in a sine, will give you x, which means you're going to do what we call the inverse, which was represented by sine to the negative 1 of x equals y. Okay, so for example, for sine, that when sine or when you think of the coordinate point, like for example, on the unit circle at pi over two, sine of pi over two is one. But if we're doing the inverse, that means when is sine one? When does sine equal one? And sine equals one at pi over two. And so instead of having the coordinate point pi over two one, you now have the coordinate point of one comma pi over two. Now, 
sine actually stops here and here because normally what you're doing in inverse function basically is transformed um, from the original. No, not from the... An inverse trig function normally would just be reversed when graphing. You take the graph and basically it will reflect over the equation y equals x. But functions, in order to them be a function, that means vertical line test. Okay, if this tr if this sine function would continue up, then the vertical line test would fail. So a sine graph actually stops at negative pi over two, and it will only go up to pi over two. It will not go any further. Same thing with cosine. The cosine function would normally keep going as a wave function, but again, that means if you'd create a vertical line test, it would fail. So a cosine function inverse will stop from zero to pi. The sine function goes from negative pi over two to pi over two. The cosine function goes from zero to pi. Tangent ends up looking like, um, almost kind of like a square, or like a cube root um, kind of thing. And again, it will actually stop eventually at pi over two and negative pi over two as well. Cotangent does the same thing. It looks like tangent, but again, it's in reverse. Um, it's reflected across the line y equals x. And we'll end, I mean, it will go from zero up to pi.